Hello everybody, how are you? Sorry about their driving into the setting sun. Sorry about that. Uh, driving into rush hour here in P-Town, the Berg, Bridge City, Pittsburgh. And so many people are calling me saying, man, you gotta do more of these videos on the forgotten heroes of our sports teams, the Steelers, the Pirates, the Penguins, the fan favorites, the working day lunch pail players that don't get all the press, and this time we're going to move to baseball. The Pirates started in 1882, guys, and so many of those players remain unheralded. And I don't profess to be an expert. I'm not from Pittsburgh. I'm not from the Berg. So uh, I'm just going by information that was given to me by a guy outside a giant eagle wearing a pirate's cap. And he had on a, he had on a sweatshirt that said, Pirate's Nation. So I assume this guy knows what he's talking about. And he told me three different players that we want to put the spotlight on, namely from 1915. Now you say, wait a minute, 1915. That's right. Old Cubby Storbore. Cubby Storbore was the best shortstop in the league in, the, in those days. And he had a special scoop method to grab the ball coming to him at the shortstop position and fire it to first. And he did this with a small shovel that he built from the snow shovel that he used to shovel the walk in front of his grandma's house. He modified a snow shovel he used to shovel the walk in front of his grandma's house and he hid it in his glove. In fact, he had a special pocket in the glove for the scoop. So when that ball came firing to, to uh, Storbore, he scooped it. He didn't catch it, he scooped it. And sometimes he kept it in the scoop as he flung it like a lacrosse, like a lacrosse racket at the uh, first baseman, sometimes to the second baseman, and was able to get more guys out in double plays that way uh, than in any other team during the early part of the MLB, the early years, the 1880s, 1890s, 1910s, 1900s, 1920s. He was one of the best. And he was also a fan favorite because he was down to earth. He shoveled his grandma's driveway. He shopped for his own uh, salads. He uh, bought his own tires for his own car. He worked on his car. He, he, he knew how to. He knew how to use a number uh, ten metric wrench, okay, to loosen the bolts on a uh, motor. And uh, he knew how to use a spark plug wrench. He knew how to gap a plug, if you guys know what that means. Gap a spark plug, that's old school. But uh, this guy was uh, a fan favorite, would come early to the game, sign autographs. He would sign autographs in between games. Sometimes he'd have to put the piece of paper on his scoop just to keep it flat enough to uh, write on. Because sometimes people hand you pieces of paper, there's nothing flat to write on. What are you going to write on? You know, maybe the top of somebody's flat head. But... Uh, Anyway, he was one of the best and is the first in our spotlight of Pittsburgh Pirates lunch pail heroes of the past. Let's go all the way to 1931, and this guy was named Keystone Limpy. Now, Keystone was named that because he played on the Keystone bag. And, of course, as a player of, of uh, mild renown around here, he didn't pay for one meal. He didn't pay for one drink. And uh, they ended up naming a whole beer after the guy called Keystone. And Keystone was noted in his uh, play on the field by the way he could, he could take the ball on an infield play and he put an extra spin on it because he had an extra knuckle on his ring finger. And he gave it that extra knuckleball spin, and it got to the first baseman with speed and electricity that wowed the crowd around the league. Now, Keystone, uh, he was a guy that was more, almost more famous off the field because of his parties. 
I mean, everybody in town wanted to go to his parties, and uh, you know, if you if you got invited to a Pirates player's house for a party, you'd go. Well, that's the way it was in those days. And this is in the '30s when the Pirates were something, man. They were, uh, you know, already been in existence for 40 years or whatever it was. 1882 they started. So, you know, Keystone was a man about town. He was never, never a top hitter, never a top numbers guy, right? He's not, he's not in the record books on the numbers. But on the personality uh, numbers, he was on the top of the charts. So that is number two in our look at fan favorite Pittsburgh Pirates from the annals of history. And finally, we're going to go all the way to 1963. And you got Toby Pollock right there in the first base. And T Toby, uh, how come we're all in the infield? I don't know. And Toby was one of the best first basemen to play for the Pirates. Now, remember, uh, during that decade, the Pirates were relatively uneven, but he didn't care because he gave thanks to the one force that uh, leveled him out and allowed him to play the best baseball of his life. And that was his uh, Alaskan Husky named Porty. And Porty and he had a bond that you just can't you just can't get anywhere and sometimes he'd set Porty next to him uh, on the field. Porty would just lay down and uh, you know, it gave him inspiration, gave him friendship, gave him uh, and so the team said who cares? You know again, it was a different era. They don't care. Put the dog on the field. And uh, Porty of course as you could guess was uh, almost